Hello and welcome to my channel. I am Bearded Dev, bringing you another SQL tutorial, and we're going to be looking at showing totals with Group by. I'm going to go straight over to SQL, and I'll show you what I mean by that, the issue we will face, and solutions for that as well. Okay, so I've jumped over to SQL straight away. I've got just a generic query here, so we're just looking at customer sales uh, date and sales amount. So what I want to do first of all is I want to return the total by customer. So I'm just going to wrap that within an aggregate function of sum uh, and I'll just alias that as customer total. And in here I need to use my group by sales customer ID to give us the totals. So if I go ahead and execute that query now, then a very simple query, we get the total per customer. If you're not familiar with how to use group by and aggregate functions, I do have some videos on that on my channel, so do go and check those out. Now the problem we face with this query is that I also want to return the total of all of the customers. So one way we could approach that would be to write another aggregate function. So again, I want some sales amount, but now I want the sum of the sum sales amount. So I'm going to wrap that within another aggregate function and I'll just alias that as grand total. So if I go ahead and try and execute this query, I'll get an error message here to say, we can't perform an aggregate function already on an aggregate function. Now, one solution we can come up with is we can wrap this data within a CTE. So if I return to the original query and wrap this within a CTE, and then simply select a sum from the CTE, and I'll just remove the results. So if I select sum, it's now called cus total, and I'll give that an alias as grand total. So if I now go ahead and execute that, I now get the grand total of just over three thousand pounds. But the problem is I've lost my underlying data effectively. I've uh, lost my sales per customer in this case. So I can get around that by tying that data back together. Um, but instead what I actually want to do is be able to do that within the same query. So I'm just going to remove the common table expression that I've just created and go back to the original query. And here is a little trick that we can use. We can call on the over clause. So quite simply, what we're going to do is we're going to start with our original aggregate function. And again, what we're going to do is wrap that within another aggregate function. But this time we're going to be performing it on the select side. So after the grouping has been returned. So if I use the over clause to indicate that, uh, and now an over clause, must contain uh, an order by statement. But if we want to use uh, an order by statement where we don't really necessarily care about the order, in this case, all we're simply saying is give me the grand total. So we can have an order by, and then within, within brackets, we can have select null. And we're going to alias that as grand total. So that is first going to perform the aggregate function uh, according to the group by statement and then it's going to give us a total. So if I go ahead and execute this statement now, we now have our grand total within the same query and I haven't had to go outside of this query and run a total and then tie that back together. We may want to do that so we may need to go down that avenue, we may not worry about the total. But if we really want to use group by and return the grand total of the data, or for that matter, maybe an average, we could use an average here, 
so we could get an average per customer. So effectively what we're, what we're doing here is performing multiple aggregations on the data without the need for any effectively temporary objects and then having to tie that data back together. So that's a, a really good trick to know, um, especially with using the, the over clause because that applies as part of the select statement. So we can perform further calculations on the results of the grouping. So I've just gone ahead and wrote out a, another aggregate function to calculate the average. So we can see that average has been returned taking into account the totals per customer. So we want the total spend per customer and then calculate the average of the total per customer. So again, we're performing multiple aggregations on one set of data. We could also find out how that customer's total differs from the average or even a percentage. So if we simply dropped their customer spend, so again, we'll drop that and that will go over um, our total, our grand total. Uh, we don't need the alias. But. So if I go ahead and do that and then wrap that within parentheses or brackets, multiply that by 100 and then I will cast that as a decimal. So I'll do decimal six, two. And if I go ahead and execute that now, we can see customer ID one accounts for almost 20% of our, of our total, of the total we're getting per customer. We can see customer ID seven, he's towards 10%, he's our lowest performing customer. So I really hope you have enjoyed that video. If you have, hit that like button. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you are new to the channel, don't forget to check out my other videos and subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that notification button to be made aware of when new videos are uploaded. Thanks a lot for watching.